Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in the Shrigamitsu.com video, we have two news stories for you. The first of which is AMD's Ryzen 3 1200. We have a benchmark plus some leaked specifications of the upcoming CPU. And then finally, we're going to talk about the X299 platform with Intel actually revealing the overclock potential of the 7740X, along with a rumor that we might actually see soldered IHSs in the future for the Basin Falls CPUs, but we'll get into that last. Let's begin with Ryzen 3, shall we? Now, of course, Ryzen 3 is due for release in the second quarter of 2017, so the fact that we're starting to see some leaks is not really too surprising. A viewer by the name of Alex actually sent me over a listing which shows not just the average CPU mark result of Ryzen 3, there are only two samples currently of the Ryzen 3 1200, but we have some information on the specifications of the CPU and we also have it a comparison versus other CPUs. Now it is a uh, quad-core CPU, so it does not have SMP at least as far as we understand it and the clock speed is 3.1 gigahertz and overclocks I'm sorry turbos to 3.4 we don't know of course overclocking results yet there are two entries as I've mentioned uh, the first scores 6951 the second 7137 which provides a very respectable 7043 of course that's an average between those two results and because we only have two samples that's not exactly a huge sample size or anything like that but it does provide some inkling of the performance of these chips and it seems to be a roughly on par with let's say the i5 30 3570k or perhaps even the 2600 now there are a couple of things of course to note we don't know if BIOSes are perhaps going to slightly improve performance or perhaps newer drivers are going to slightly improve performance of the chips. We don't know what overclocking potential these processors have and perhaps the most obvious, these chips are going to be relatively cheap. We don't have of course an official price yet, but let's face it, these are not going to be $200, $300 parts. Okay, so let's jump back into the 7740X along with some other Basin Falls news. A day or two ago I did make a video which explored some of the early reviews of the X299 platform and I did say in that video that I think you should be very weary, should I say wary, of the results because it was pretty obvious that the software, the BIOSes and so on was very early and actually a tweet by Hardware Canix confirms this. They said, hope no one has done X299 testing and taking the weekend off. Newest BIOSes from the last 20, sorry, 48 hours provide significant performance uplift. Time to do retesting. In other words, those early results, those early benchmarks as suspected were not really indicative of the final performance. Now, how much is significant is down to your imagination. Is it going to be across a whole plethora of benchmarks is it going to be just specific scenarios ultimately we don't know but this is one of the reasons i do think that those reviews should have been listed as early results or preview or something along those lines and accordingly intel themselves are still working on this stuff now is that necessarily a good thing well it depends on your perspective if they can get this 100 percent sorted out before they go on sale yes it's a good thing if not and they're still tweaking it after retail that kind of sucks but Intel are not alone in this, and let's face it, we all know about Ryzen, and that's not knocking either company. Ultimately, you have schedules and all that to keep. So as long as it gets resolved in the long term, I'm not too fast. Now, let's move over to KB Lake X, shall we? Now, I do believe that these processors are still very baffling in their actual existence, and I don't advise anyone to purchase these processors because, quite frankly, I feel the very fact that they are on such expensive motherboards and we've learned of course that there aren't advantages in terms of the number of PCIe lanes and all this other stuff we've talked about before but there is something rather interesting with the overclocking potential at the very least so the 7740X should easily hit 5 gigahertz this is based upon a reviewer's guide from Intel themselves which videocards.com have grabbed 
So over 100 samples, apparently the 7740X can hit 5 gigahertz at 1.2 volts, and that's in worst case scenario 1.34 volts to achieve to achieve this frequency. Some samples, in other words, if you get golden samples, if you will, you're going to hit around 5.2 gigahertz, but obviously. Higher voltage is what you're really going to need to pl uh, pump into this. Another thing, of course, Hexus.net, who did do a early set of tests on the 7900X, uh, has managed to wrangle out around 4.6 to 4.7 gigahertz, depending on your tolerance for temperatures on the 7900X processor, which is not too bad. The problem is heat is definitely an issue. In some cases, they were getting around 100 degrees. So it does look like the X series of chips, base and falls if you prefer, does have nice overclocking ability. Intel also released a few official, well I say released, they put them in the reviewer's guide, which is very standard practice. For those who don't know, I'll very quickly say this. Reviewers guides typically come with benchmarks that the company themselves have conducted. This is not for reviewers to take and say, hey, this is what we've got, guys, and basically paste those numbers into their review. The purpose behind this is, let's say that you've bought a piece of hardware, and let's say for the sake of argument, it's a graphics card, and it says, the reviewer's guide, that you should be getting 65 frames a second at a certain resolution, at a certain res um, at a certain you know, preset in the game that's a very high quality and you're getting 65 frames a second in the reviewer's guide, you do it and suddenly you're getting like 42 with a similar processor, then obviously you can kind of figure out what's going on. Oh crap, I left MSAA forced or okay, I can't figure out what's wrong. I'm going to write to the company and try and figure out, you know, if it's an issue of the drivers or something else, and then you can fix that. In other words, it's to make sure that, you know, you as a reviewer are getting some, uh, the, the type of performance which you should be from that piece of equipment. Anyway, uh, Intel do have a series of benchmarks which pit the 7740X against the 7700K and the 6950X as well as the 7900X. And I won't read them out because, quite frankly, there are a couple here. But you can see that it pretty much performs in line with what you'd expect against, let's say, the 7700K. To me, this is further proof that you don't really want to buy the 7740X for necessarily stock performance. Maybe, maybe, maybe I can see an argument if you're buying based in falls anyway. Let's say you're waiting for, I don't know, like an, a 16 or an 18 core chip, let's say and uh, you just need to buy a processor now just to get it working and let's say that you feel that you can get a good price on ebay maybe for the 7740x i would still caution you and say wait if you can but because i know the higher core count cpus are not going to be released for a few months then maybe but even then or maybe if you're just buying it for the sake of it and doing benchmarking then i can definitely understand it as well Finally, we're going to finish this video off with some good news and perhaps some weird news, and that is Intel and IHS. So, the folks over at bitsandchips.it have some sources, supposedly, which tell us that Intel in the near future, basically think end of this year, beginning of next year, um, will release a Skylake X series of processors with soldered IHSs. So basically, they claim that Intel have rushed out Skylake X, and this is to counter AMD's Ryzen slash Threadripper. According to Intel, this is another piece of news, and frankly, I just didn't bother to cover it because I think it's kind of silly. Intel have said that they're not doing that. They don't, you know, they haven't released any of the uh, X299 processors to counter Intel, uh, sorry, AMD. Personally, I feel that that's, well, not being exactly truthful, but I digress. Anyway, going back to the rumour, according to bitsandchips.it, one of the reasons that they are not using soldered TIM is, well, very simple. Basically, it was rushed. And according to them, I'm going to read out this verbatim, it seems that Intel hasn't had time to test extensively the process of soldering with Skylink X, so the Santa Clara company decided to use TIM to buy time. I just realised I said soldered TIM there, sorry. So I meant to say soldered IHS, and instead they're using TIM. So obviously, if that's the case, in theory, if you can wait until, let's say, the end of this year, possibly beginning of next year, is a possibility that chips from Intel will instead be soldered, where in which case you should have better um, temperatures. 
There are a number of people, this is somewhat off topic, that have actually started to do the lidding on the various uh, X299 CPUs, especially the 7740X, but they are reporting excellent temperatures. However, while they say that the removal of the heat sink and all, uh, sorry, the the lid is not exactly difficult, well, yeah, the processors aren't cheap. So, for example, if you're buying the 7900, you're looking at like a thousand bucks. So, do you really want to spend like a thousand dollars and then do delidding? That is not my processor. I'm not going to do delidding. I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, I do do overclocking, all that stuff, but you can't do a take backs with something like that. You can't do a control Z. So, you know, if I got given a processor and said, hey, you know, we'll replace it, yeah, I'll do I'll do a delidding on screen. But other than that, I'm not going to do it with my own hardware. I'm not going to lie to you. Yes, it seems pretty safe. And apparently, you know, some of the applications, some of the, um, you know, the tools you can get does make delidding quite easy. But ultimately, you know, it's not a guarantee. Let's just be honest. So I thought I'd just throw that in here for completeness. With all of that said, I'm going to have to go because I don't know if you guys are experiencing heat waves wherever you are, but currently the temperatures in the UK are soaring and I can't currently have desk fans on, AC on, and the windows are pretty much closed although I need to open a crack because I will basically die. Um, so I need to stop recording because I'm quite literally dripping with sweat because of all the computer equipment in here. So now I've given you that beautiful mental image, I will let you go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.